Okay, good night, good night, people. Good night and welcome to this live session. And it is not a usual live for me, but I guess you guys will have heard <clears throat> what transpired after last week, Thursday night. I guess you all would have heard. But let, if you did not hear, let me inform you. On Monday, I attended a meeting with the Honorable Prime Minister, my boss. <clears throat> and we had a meeting in the morning, good meeting, we spoke and came to a decision that he would have to relieve me of my duties as the advisor in the office of the Prime Minister because of conflict and pressure, of course. Some people thought that, as an advisor, I was out of place to question a sitting minister. And so, it was agreed. I haven't seen anything yet official, but it was agreed <clears throat> that the best thing to do is to send me on my merry way and let the country, the government continue to function without me. I had no problem with that. I'm not the boss. But I want you guys to understand the implications. I'm trying to be calm. Because <clears throat> here it is. I came in good faith trying to ask some questions, trying to represent the voiceless, the foot soldiers. And I want to say a special good night to all the foot soldiers, all the foot soldiers. All this is because of the foot soldiers. That I am speaking for, I'm fighting for. And so a decision was made by my good friend, the Prime Minister. I guess a hard decision, but something I have to give. And that is it, which is on Monday. On Wednesday, which is today, <clears throat> after doing my morning walk, I was served some legal documents from a lawyer, John Books Law, Adisha T. N. John Books, LLB. Honours, <clears throat> UWI, Attorney at Law. And so, she, when the book, it's, it's basically representing Honourable Congress Maynard. And so he made some statements saying that I defamed his character, I guess. And so I will serve with a legal document today. Hence why I'm here tonight. Because I believe this is a very serious indictment 
on our democracy, our democratic right. All of a sudden, in my beloved Saint Kitts and Nevis, people cannot ask questions of their ministers of government. Sitting ministers. And I believe this is beyond ridiculous. My question is, what happened to the good governance agenda? What happened to all them bills that is being passed about integrity in public life? I'm asking, is this a joke? Are we doing this just as a joke or are we serious? We're hearing about the filing, who filed and who got to declare the assets. We're hearing that many people are not filing. The question is, is it a joke? And so I want to address some things tonight, especially what Congress wrote to me, or the lawyer. And I want to say, you know, I hope that, and I say good night to the foot soldiers, I hope they're listening. Because we are in some serious, serious doo-doo. If this is going to be the way forward. I am telling you this evening. All that I said in my life, if you look at my life, is all truth. No lies. Foot soldiers are crying out. Nothing going on for them. So many call me and tell me about their struggles. They don't deserve it. And so I believe the politicians need to stop. Stop fooling the people. When I tell you about the monies that the people in the bank are taking home. And the foot soldiers can't get anything. We politics need to change. The people, the foot soldiers. Let me tell you something. A friend of mine used a word. When a politician comes to you. And say, I want you to converse with me. I want you to go on the trail. I want you to do my list and so forth. And the foot soldiers get up and they abandon their family, some of them. And they take the risk of getting involved in politics. A friend of mine told me, these people, we the foot soldiers, we have a legitimate expectation listen to me all saying a legitimate expectation just so you have a legitimate government if you take people to work in your campaign as the foot soldiers they have a legitimate expectation to be taken care of nobody say give them money free but to better their lot you can't use people and then desert them and I hear, I listen, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of people misrepresenting what I said in my life. I never indicated to anyone that I needed free money. I said, I apply for a loan. And so people trying to make all kind of excuses. And all the point I was trying to make is that if me, no matter how bad I be, me no angel, I mean no saint, as I say. But no matter how bad I am, if I could not move the bank with a salary of your say $10,000. With a property and a property 
that's worth millions of dollars. Now you all say you are going to take from me now. Well, who else could move the bank? And so, we are saying, if you have people in the bank making them kind of money, making certain decisions, but they ain't following the rules. They ain't following the rules. Well, you can make some provisions for the foot soldiers who help you. Who help you to fly to Dubai. Who help you to fly in Morocco. To Europe all over. And you're out there enjoying in the name of the government. But you can help your little brothers and man. But you have people trying to misrepresent what I said. But go deal with that. We are gonna deal with that. I may gonna stay on tonight. I just want to address the, what's what's going on with me in terms of the letter, and to show you that we are in a dark place right now. We are in a very dark place. So I want to talk to Miss Byron, good at Byron, who seems to believe in everything. And how loans go. But I remember your Scotia Bank. You used to turn on other people because you all don't believe people should get you. So don't talk about me and my case. Because you all don't like people to help people. Miss Bella in St. Martin, I think you misunderstand. I was never asking for the free money. So don't come on the radio as if well you asking more if you expect to get money like that. Me ain't asking for that. You saw there's a politician down there now, and I'm glad. And I hope you teach him the right way how to take care of his constituents. But don't try to change and try to muddy the waters for nobody. Carl Bowen is here today. And you are trying to twist and turn. You are one of the same people. Put the ball out when things ain't go away. But I give you a chance. I see a man today in America have a personal life and me me name the man. People using the situation to, 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 to try and promote their situation. Me and the man. Me don't want to represent me. But you're not well, you want well presenting me, but no one with no idea and use me to pull up the numbers. Do your own life and talk about your own issues. Don't use my show to promote you, whoever you are. But I want to go to something here. As I tell you, I want to come talk about you. Know. And I want you all to listen clearly before I start. In politics, in politics, there is something called collective responsibility and individual responsibility. Collective responsibility basically speaks to the cabinet. And when you discuss this, you can't handle things. But I want to go to the individual responsibility. And I want to listen to me clearly. The doctrine of individual responsibility means that a minister, listen to me carefully, that a minister, not a minister of religion, we're talking about politics, that a minister is responsible to parliament. For the work of his department. The minister. Not the permanent officials. Like the permanent secretary and so forth. Is to be praised. Or blamed. For that work. This doctrine. Is emphasized. Particularly. At question time. In Parliament. If found. 
blameworthy. A minister may be censored, transferred, or dismissed. If an error is made that is less serious, the minister may apologize. Listen to me carefully. Each minister is therefore responsible and accountable for the actions of his ministry and his departments. Let me read it again. Each minister is therefore responsible and accountable for the actions of his ministry and its departments. Whether the minister authorized, I want you to hear this, whether the minister authorized such actions or not. Whether the minister authorized such action or not. That is what we call individual responsibility. Well, let me talk to the man from number three now. You wrote me a six-page letter from your lawyer. And I want to know if these people are going to school. Full of all bull. I can't believe that a lawyer can write these things. Full of all bull. Because when they point out everything that I said. Where I did not allege. I asked a question. And so. If Congress Menard. I won't call him now because he wrote me. The man from number three. Is the minister. Of public works. If he is the minister of public works, then who should I ask the questions to? Who should I question? I just tell you, individual responsibility. Congress Maynard is the sitting minister of I mean of, of public works, infrastructure, and he's also the sitting minister of Skelet. And so every question that I ask, I was asking the minister because he is responsible. He is responsible. So when I ask about the company, some great saying it's great. That company, as far as I hear and I'm hearing, that company is like what you call a ghost company. It's not a company like Sorry Paving. It's not a company like Warner. It's not a company like um, Strati. This company is a company by the books. And that is why we got to be concerned. This company is a company that was given the job to break down a portion of the Bastia High School. This company ain't have a barrel. This company ain't got a shovel. This company ain't even got a pick. But this company was given a job. Thank you. This company was given a job to break down the Bastia High School. And nobody seemed to know the legitimacy of the company. And I'm not saying the company is not legitimate. All I ask is who 
has the dealing. Who know about the company? What is the affiliation of this company with St. Kitts? Because we don't know. Because we hear we need somebody from Grenada, Guyana, somewhere. So we have to ask questions. I have to ask questions as a concerned citizen. What is the relationship with this company and whoever? And so he asked me question. And so that seemed as though it created some confusion. But we still need to find out. We still need to find out about this company, you know. So when you're going to send me a letter, say, I mean, I'm going to what I said because I don't miss it. I don't miss it. But here it is. I act as attorney for and behalf of Honorable Congress Gregor Menten. Maybe it's 10 many one. Men 10, men 10, 10 men in one, men I. Member of Parliament, Christopher number 3, Public Works, Energy, and so forth. But I need part I want to go over here. Mr. Maynard complains about the entirety of the said speech quoted above. The said speech meant and or was understood to mean in its natural or ordinary and or inferential meaning and or by innuendo that among other things. So he interpreted what I'm saying now. He interpreted what I'm saying. He said as we, as a as retaliation for a conversation between both of you concerning a basis allegation made by you in April of 2023 and there was disaffection among members of cabinet Mr. Maynard now has a personal or political vendetta against you but if you want to meet me and tell me what I say is garbage you point your finger at me, place, and why say it's garbage, and I must take it down and so forth. And if you call other people and complain to them, but I don't feel like you're gonna have that against me. And so, if I feel that you are in charge of Skelek. Me feel so. And you are a very good friend of a friend in there. So me not gonna mind to believe. And me can make an allegation to say it seems as if I've been targeted. Oh, what well, well, food is this? I oh, really get people here. I could say what I feel, that's what me feel. How could you be the famous that and you are the substantial minister of Skelec? He said B is engaged in political victimization and abuse of power to settle personal or political scores. Well, that's not the same thing. You thin skin. Everybody know you are, you are thin skin. Even from in school, everybody saying that you thin skin. And so you as the minister don't want people to question what is happening in your department. But I know once you're in politics, you as a sitting minister must be questioned and nobody, nobody could tell me that in this life where I'm living that I can't question a sitting minister, when people vote for you, you are accountable to the people. And so questions must be asked. You are special. Look.
look how much things I don't ask questions about with the unit I was in. Look how much things I don't ask questions about the former Prime Minister Timothy Harris. Were you special to come and believe that you won't get a free pass? No. Once I am telling you now, and if that is not true, I will go into the court and tell them. Once I'm alive as a political analyst, that's my training. I will ask hard questions to the politicians if I believe. They are transgressing the law. If I believe they are suspect of victimizing people, if I believe they are doing people wrong, I will ask questions. So I don't know how you believe just because. I support Dr. Drew and the Labour administration. Then you can do as you like. And when I ask a question, you get upset. Why well, politics is not for thin-skinned people? You need to get out of politics. It's the best. The people in the village, it better you all have vote for Moila Box. It better you all have vote for Moila Box. Moila Box is a more people person than Conway Smedad. So when he come talking, his stupidness. Asking question. As the minister, here I said, here what it is saying. As the minister of government with oversight for the saying it's skeleton. So then, who gonna ask? If you are the minister with oversight, are you gonna ask? It's you. I have me have to read no more. If you are the minister and I have a problem, whether you like what problem I have or not, the point is I have a problem, and so I have to ask you. I can't go ask Marsha about Skelec. Marsha should slap me. Marsha about boat. So me ask Marsha about boat. I can't go ask Samal about Skelec. Solomon in agriculture. So you are the minister. And so I have to ask you. And if you are, I will go back to my life, you know, and read everything over and over again. All I was asking is questions. He said, indeed, as Minister of Public Works is involved in corrupt deals and fraudulent practices. Who said that? Including the formation of a shell company. Who said that? I was asking who owned the company. And the, the, the thing is clear to see. These people just want to waste people's time and try to intimidate people. With unqualified persons fronting for him. But nobody said about the front to you. We want to know about the company. And we want to know if there is a relationship. If there's none, say there's none. That is very simple and clear. And then you say, he did not have the financial means or final financial qualification to build his family home. And was able only to do so for illicit or political favors. Who said that? Call this boy, you need to go back to Trinidad, you know. Go back to school. I asked you, or I said to you, that you built a home when I believe, I suspect, you did not have the money and I believe you were helped. And so, now that you are in a position to help people, why are you not helping people? All of us get help. You go to the bank, you get a loan. You go to this, you get a loan. How could that come across as being illegitimate or illegal? Why something got to be wrong with all you? When you are in public office, you all must understand that you are under scrutiny. People are going to ask you hard questions. People are going to ask you hard questions. He said here again, is involved in an extra marital affair with a young lawyer. Well, who said that? <laughs> what is when the people they can they can understand? Who said that? I talk about the young lady in a relationship with the GM. Well, how can we get in? He wanna somebody or something? 
I'm so stupid and the liar listen this and go like this. The liar listen Congress and not listen the original thing and go like this. The liar that should be this bad. The liar should be this bad. We should have got a sense. The liar that got a sense. Because nothing like that come out in the conversation. Is a hateful, unscrupulous, but here he is a name now. That he, he is a hateful, unscrupulous, vindictive, criminally dishonest person with power who is engaged in segregated or segregated distribution of state resources. For his benefit and his selected few. Me, me not understand what, what, what that mean. Me, me, me must be, me must in a, me must in a sleep or something. Huh? Me not understand where that they come from. All I'm saying to you that you don't like people, and it is clear to see. That you not like people. The people in number three ball. The people in boxing the ball. Scotch are ball. Book na ball. All them people who work to put you in power a ball. Because you are not representing the people well. That is politics. Representation is what people mean. Need, sorry, not mean. Need, they need representation. And you up there not representing them. But one come send some kind of letter. But all kind of, you, you, you make up all kind of things. You make up all kind of things. Me never know the man have something in here about his wife. Me never know my wife. Me never say nothing about my wife. I'll be out of place to say something like that. And so, you need to listen well. You need to listen well. All oh, kind of people are ball. But you. Not talk about my partner, Cody's Cook. You, teach, you treat Cody's Cook. Cody's Cook is somebody that I have grown to have some admiration for. Curtis Cook went out there on the battlefield and Curtis Cook represented the Labour Party well so that you could get a seat and all of a sudden as soon as you reach in you're not study nobody you're not study Curtis Cook you know I study book now. You know I study the man of boys. You promise all kind of people all kind of things. And that is politics. When you go into office, when you go into office, you start to represent everybody. Not some. Don't be hiding. And so, you, you have demonstrated that you're not a good representative. And you come send me this stupid letter here to waste people's time. Send me this stupid letter to waste my time. And I come tonight because what? Me ain't responding to this. I will go to court. I will go to jail. Before I respond to this. Because if we. Let me tell you something. You know. I said to somebody today. 
It's best if they come and just lock me up. It's best if they come and they lock me up because it seems as though we are living in a dictatorship. Federation. A dictatorial federation. If I gonna ask questions, are you gonna send me a letter? I ask you a question about the Ministry of Public Works, Infrastructure and Support Works. And I ask about Skellig. Even though involved me, I'm asking questions. And you won't be offended that I am defaming you. Well, how are you getting it? Man, you are the minister. I'm going to teach you something. You are the minister. And so questions would be asked to you. Maybe you don't want me to ask you the questions then. So maybe I have to get somebody else to ask you the questions. But the questions must be asked to you because you are the sitting minister. So how dare you want to chastise me from asking you questions? How dare you want to intimidate me from asking you questions? Congress Maynard, I have a little advice to you. An advice for you. Start to look after your people in number three. Start to understand what politics is about. Politics is about not you boasting about you trip your tech and, the in, and how you're doing IT and so forth. All them trips, you don't even suppose to take them trips there. You, you take them back, suppose to go on them trips. You're a minister. You should be home making sure your ministry is being run well. You want potholes you have up and down the place. Drive up and down the place and see where the potholes be and tell your public works people, fix them. That's a your job. Not going and playing every minute. Not don't want to hear this what people say. I have a hole in Kayon, up a Kayon up there when you're going. People got to be careful how they drive in that hole. That hole has been there from God knows when. People have complained bitterly on Facebook. People have complained in person and still can't fix. That's what you're supposed to do. Fix the roads. Oh, I think I'm going to fool me. And I'm going to show you something, you know, people. Oh, I need to pay attention to what's going on. Oh, I need to pay attention to what's going on. He's talking about no disaffection and so forth. And I told you all last time that they are not he. When Dr. Juse, say Jeffrey Hanley is deputy, that's when war start. The war started before that, but that's when we war really start. When Dr. Ju gave Jeffrey Hanley the deputy. And if, if, if Dr. Drew would listen to me, I would have taken some of portfolio and, and ship it up. Show him who is boss. No other place to be threatening the Prime Minister with a letter. And I ship them up. Because he's not doing his work. Pay attention. Care on well. Care on well with the water. It's well on its way. They're building this and that. that. Can you like to take picture? Can you like to take picture and put them up on the Facebook? You see, can you see Kayan taking any picture recently when the well done do up to say things progressing in Kayan? No! Because it's Dr. Drew constituency. I better stay attention. Up in Monkey Hill, where the road should have started a long time ago. But I understand road work start. Oh, you see the minister of infrastructure up there taking picture in Monkey Hill to say the road start? No! Because he has a problem with Dr. Drew. And whether Dr. Drew wants to admit it or not, I am telling you, he has a problem with Dr. Drew. And that he big problem. He want to be deputy. He want to be prime minister. And he cannot be. 
He can't even be the representative for the people in number three. The people in number three crying out. The people in number three crying out. They need help. But the man from number three missing in action. Missing in action. Can't go in Buckley's. Can't go in Buckley's. But you all know. Do you all know? You see? These people are something else. They're talking about, oh, this and that and so forth. And these people, they got some followers who are so stupid and foolish. But well, I got to give them a chance. I got to give some of them a chance. And I understand why. Do you all know that Congress man bought a, a, a car, a jeep, a car, a vehicle, a vehicle? Six months into winning. The vehicle costs almost a hundred thousand US dollars. Electric vehicle and he up there free to drive it. Because what? He treated people so bad that he free to drive it because he don't want people know that he got electric vehicle. And that is the man. He believes that he is better than people. We have a lot of testimony on that. People who went to school with him. People who sing Calypso with him. So we could talk. People who walk with him. Don't we believe that God make he and the devil make you as our way. He believes he better than people. And so when you ask question, he is defamed. He is he he, he feels hurt. He is hurt. Me, 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 he is me and all. He is hurt. Because nobody is supposed to question Congress Maynard. And people want to back up the stupidness and talk about how me uh, this. Me not do nothing. Me not change nothing. I tell my trouble me. I tell my trouble me. Me defend me. So I must understand where all this thing coming from. I must and I see all kind of comments and all kind of this and all kind of that. Me no had no problem. Me not have no problem. But if I ask questions, all you're going to say, as a minister, nothing goes to be done. And you want apology. And you want this. And you want that. And you want compensation to do your job. To do your job. I'm doing my job. I am doing my job. My job is to ask questions when there is doubt. So I still have to ask about the company, I still have to find out about the company and tell you all what my findings are. So, don't let nobody put you all in the wool over your eye. And all I want to I do know that this man has all big lies. God will represent himself. In court. Because I want to see the court go and tell me. As a citizen of St. Kitts Nevis. That I can question. My representative. In parliament. He's all of us representative. And I go ask the question. And I want to see who will tell me. I can ask questions about the different entities alone. Because if that is the case, as I've said before, we're wasting our time with all the legislation that we would have passed. We're wasting our time if we can ask hard questions. And a lot of people say, oh, but you're going to ask them, you know what time? I ask these questions behind closed doors to people. Nobody has studied me. 
We like this kind of band. But the band with Bobby Gogs and support, nobody take me on. You can't even get a chance to ask the question. So you got to come publicly and ask them. You understand? So when people want to intimidate people, and when I look at this thing, it's laughable. Let me tell you something. When you defame somebody, you must be telling lies. Not truth. Lies. And me not tell one lie in that presentation. Me don't tell lie. I do not tell lies. If I tell you something, it's because I don't know different. But I do not tell lies. And anybody who know me, I don't tell lies. The truth. They always say the truth shall set you free. So, the man from number three to thin skin. Thin skin and scheming. And scheming, you know, during the last election, you know, and this is a story. I got two stories to tell you all. During the last election, Congress Maynard called me and indicated that he wanted to come on my life. No, I became suspicious. I said, why would Congress call me and say he want to be in my life? So I said, you know, me a man that work on this. I said, but Congress, I don't have people on my life. It's just me alone. But if I had to have somebody on my life, it would be Dr. Drew. Because Dr. Drew is my friend, one. And two, Dr. Joe from number eight. So I would not have you come on my life as the first guest. And it's when I think back, I realize the man was scheming, trying to show up Dr. Joe as far as I'm concerned. That's how it appears to me. That you can come to me and ask a question to come on my life. And not even going through your 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 your, um, your representative, your, your boss, the leader of the party. Not even going to that. You come. And if you look back and remember, that is the way the man operates. That is how he operates. He wants to be the man. The man. And nobody must ask no questions. And when somebody asked him after that, when they had a problem with me saying this and that, the man speaking as if, well, Big Lay is no contribute, no way at all, shape or form, to the success of labor. That is how nasty the man is. Nasty! Secondly, I'm going to give me a story. And this is show the height of nastiness. Now, it's a man's story. So, a my story is a man tell me what he witnessed. And if this is so, that is nastiness. So, it's not me saying it. If I want me to use the word, it's an allegation. Somebody tell me, me don't know if it's true. But me gonna talk it because it's nastiness. Somebody beg Congress, please come support me, man. Went and bought a chicken from the person. And he bought the chicken. And when he went up the road, me gonna tell her what he do. But what he did was nasty. So, as far as he's concerned, the man who's selling the chicken is not worthy of a little respect. 
And all he had to do is give the man the money and say, this is a contribution to you. And leave the man chicken alone. But what he did with the chicken? Me don't want say so. Me don't want another letter. <laughs> because if he could put in there something about his wife, when me don't talk about He might talk about the chicken, when me don't know about So me don't talk that. All I'm telling you, Congress me not. You need to. You need to. Pay more attention. It's a little person again. You ain't got to pay me. Pay more attention to your constituency. Pay more attention to your constituents. Pay more attention to the people who worked with you. Pay more attention to the people who voted for you. A free advice may I give you. Free advice. And you take it to me and tell you something wrong. All I'm telling you. All I'm telling you. Pay attention to the people in Champsville, as I always say, in number three, in boys and so The people crying out, for God's sake. Crying out. Are you not listening to them? No. As I said, I came here to just inform you of what transpired this week. And that is what it is that I got a letter. And a letter that I have no intention of responding to. And so, but who say throw away chicken? Lord, nobody say throw away chicken. Lord, I won't say, me say throw away chicken now. Me no say throw away chicken. Me say, me no know why do the chicken. Anyway, I just wanted you to know what transpired. But to assure you that I will not stop representing the people, the voiceless, those who are not capable of representing themselves. Many people call me and give me all kinds of stories. And I will continue to listen to them and bring them to the fore. You see, that's only one they want to intimidate me that I can't represent the people. Even though when they tell me, I, this and I, that, I don't investigate what they tell me. So I don't come here and tell you what I don't know. And that is why I came to ask questions to the minister. A number of persons reach out to me today. A number of people reach out to me today. But I'm not going to use tonight or this time to speak to some of the things that they told me. But I want to thank the many persons, people from local, people from overseas, people from regional, international, wherever you are yours. They say, my boy is going. People who reach out to me and show me their love and show me their appreciation. People who showed me that they're with me. That they're with me. People who showed me that provided I continue to speak to the people They would never ever forsake me. You understand? They would never ever forsake me. And I appreciate the people who show their concern.
And so I want these guys to know and girls that I will not be intimidated. I will not be intimidated. And I'm not trying to mash up anything. As far as I'm concerned, I'm trying to bring it together. But people must be honest with themselves. People must be honest with themselves. You understand? That is what they need to do. We are the crossroads right now. We are looking for good representation. Not people who are all of self and none of thee, as the song say. And that is how some of these politicians come across. All of self and none of thee. They don't care about the people who they serve anymore. And I don't tell all you, the, the, the type of politics have changed. You are going to continue to fool the people. You all cannot continue to fool the people. So wise up. You all cannot be thin skin. So tough up. You understand? And so, I want to assure you, the people, that I will continue to fight for you. I will continue to speak truth to power. And so, all who want to say, how me this and that, me not change. I'm not changing. But when you come and expect, if you're going to talk about team unity and come and want to do worse than team unity, I have a problem with that. I would have a problem with that. Because if I had a problem with that then, well, I sure will have a problem with it now. And so if you say you're going to do better, come on, man, do better. And don't take the people for a ride. People are sensible now. We have sensible people in saying it's a nevis. And we will ask the hard questions. And so you got to toughen up and answer. Toughen up and answer. But you must remember who got you there. The politicians must remember who got them there. You understand? And so I know there's gonna be backlash. I know people are gonna be all kinds of things. But that don't face me. I hope you all understand that. Anybody who knows me know that. Me don't care. Me don't gonna shame. Remember that. Me don't gonna shame when it comes on certain things. You know why? Because he without sin cast the first stone. Somebody who attack. I know what position I'm in. But I attack until me don't keep nothing in. Everybody want to know my story. Oh, you hide and live in a lie. Not going to live a lie. But one thing I know, I am not going to give you a blight to exploit the people of this federation. And so, if what I say in that could be so wrong, well, something is wrong with our system. For me to ask a sitting minister, about some concerns that I have. That can't apply. Not in this 21st century. Can't apply. And I want you to understand that. Get some skin, man, Congress. Toughen up. You see how I'm going to clip some people and you're, you're so thin skin? Huh? You're so thin skin? Get go some balls. Next thing you're going to say, Mr. You're not going to balls. Go some balls and stop believe that you are mightier than thou. People, 
hope I didn't waste your time. But I want to say thanks for the many people who locked on, who wanted to hear my response. You know, sometimes you have to tone it down when the legal system gets involved. Can't tell it up. But I think I shed some light. I think you now understand my situation. And again, I say thank you for tuning in and thank all of you who are rallying with me to make St. Kitts and Nevis a better place.